<laughs> Welcome to Monster Chiller Thriller Wine 9. That's right, this is the ninth version or the ninth show of Monster Chiller Thriller Wine. This thing is always so hot. Anyway, I had to go a little old school on the recorder because uh, I can't find the little cable that plugs in. Anyway, um, so welcome to the ninth, uh, the ninth year of doing the special wine uh, episode. This is my favorite episode of the year to do. Oh, hello, my name is Mark Fusco. I'm your host, uh, your Grim Reaper for the evening. Uh, and again, welcome to 1337 Wine TV. Um, so this is the ninth year uh, in a row that I've done is it in a row? No, I skipped a year. I did skip a year. Anyway, uh, so this is the ninth year uh, that I've done the Monster Chiller Thriller Wine Halloween Special. And um, uh, so my good friends over at Creative Palette uh, got to me first. Unfortunately, the port people didn't quite get here in time for me to do another port episode like I did last year. Uh, but they did send me some port wines, so I'll be reviewing those a little bit later on. Not tonight, necessarily. Um, and almost as per usual, well, it is three minutes to the witching hour. Didn't quite, didn't quite uh, wait all the way till midnight tonight. Um, and um, But I am recording this pretty late. This is uh, the 23rd of October. I think last year I recorded on the 15th. Anyway, I, I kind of waited a little late to record it. Got Horatio back again, as usual. Got, got him on this side of the, got him inside the set. Got the cauldron going. You can kind of barely see it. Um, we got two wines here um, from um, Castillero del Diablo, is a Concha Toro joint. Um, so we're going to get into that. Uh, they really wanted me to do this because they market themselves this time of year as the wine of Halloween. And uh, if you didn't know, uh, I mean, I've, I've reviewed several of these uh, wines from this brand, um, so I've kind of gone over the story. but. In, in the interest of Halloween, I'll go over the story again. Uh, so the Castillo del Diablo, I'm just gonna read from the fact sheet here. Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay, well it says, Offer, offers wine lovers the very special opportunity to participate in the propagation of a century old legend known throughout the world. In the 19th century, the founder of Conchiatoro, Don Melchor, uh, discovered that his vineyard workers were sampling his greatest wines to discourage his action. Melchor uh, spread the rumor that his deepest, darkest cellar was the Castillo del Diablo, cellar of the devil. <laughs> anyway, um, so that no one would dare go down there. It worked, and a legend was born. Today, this mysterious and legendary cellar continues to hold the finest wines of Castillo, Cas Castillo del Diablo. Anyway, so that's the legend, uh, the cellar of the devil. So, um... Anyway, uh, so let's let's get cracking into it. For, uh, before I do that, it's so good to be on the set to actually record a video, a wine video, and not just videos on how I do video. Um, uh, heart surgery was successful, which I've already mentioned on all the other videos, but heart surgery was so su successful. Um, I'm fully recovered. I'm able to drink uh, wine and other beverages, adult beverages, uh, since I'm no longer on a blood thinner. Um, just so you know, you don't have to abstain from alcohol if you are on a blood thinner necessarily. The literature is a little confusing what they tell you. When you go and get this stuff, they tell you don't drink alcohol. But then you read all this other stuff and says, well, if you want to drink alcohol, don't have one, more than one or two glasses a day. Well, that's what the FDA already, or the government, I guess well, yeah, it's FDA. That's what they already recommend. One one glass, no more than one glass a day for women, and two glasses of uh, two glasses per men of like just drinks, you know, not glasses, drinks. So, I mean, take it with a grain of salt. I decided it wasn't that big of a deal to go three months um, and not drink. I did it before for a year, so uh, it definitely was no big deal to do it. Um, so let's see here. Let's let's get into the wine. All right. So the first one we're gonna do. Uh, this is the 2017, close in there, uh, Castillo del Diablo Cabernet Sauvignon from the Central Valley um, of Chile. And uh, it's 
makeup is 89.5% Cabernet Sauvignon, 8% Syrah, 1% Cabernet Franc, 1% Petit Verdot, and 0.5% Petit Syrah. Alrighty. Boom. You can already smell it. Alrighty. Let's just get right into this one. Oh, um, uh, the suggested retail price is twelve dollars. Like I said, these were donated to me uh, by my fine friends over at Creative Palette that like to supply me with a lot of these wines. We got some we got some other wine coming. Shout out champagne coming later this year. Pretty excited about that. Should be having another Don Melchor coming because the one I got last year I broke. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. But the one I got you before, I still have under core of it. So we're gonna have a little. Have fun with that. All right. So right off the bat, um, lots of red fruit more than anything else. Really raspberry heavy. Also get a bit of cedar box, tobacco, kind of a green tobacco. There's almost, there's a touch of like just green in it. Um, a bit of that, it's a $12 bottle of wine. So it's got a bit of that $12 wine aroma um it's like a bitter coffee I, I i call it a bunch of different things this is a little more bitter coffee than chemical smell but yeah i really can get really kind of that that coffee coffee bean aroma on that um definitely the raspberry a little bit of black cherry touch of vanilla. Uh, they do say it's Asian, French, and American oaks. <clears throat> oak barrels, not oaks. Because that'd be kind of weird to age them in the oak tree. Let's see what else. That's it on the fact sheet that's important. Yeah, a little bit of tar in it too. Very brambly, um, woodsy. Um, yeah, fairly brambly on that. Um, earthy. Not as much fruit on the palate as there is on the nose. Yeah, it's got, it's got more of that minerality, for lack of a better word. Uh, slight earthiness, more of a fresh soil, like a <clears throat> dried leaves. Um, tannins aren't too aggressive. They're, they're pretty restrained, actually, for a cab. You can really, you can feel the alcohol. Um, even though it's only 13.5, I kind of feel, I kind of feel it. Maybe it's just because I have it, well, Hey, the past couple weeks, I've definitely had plenty to drink, so it's not like I just started drinking tonight. Um, I get that coffee, get that bitter coffee um, flavor on it. As far as the fruit, touch of maybe blackberry. Didn't really get that on the nose. Got a little bit of blackberry in the fruit, but I don't really get that because on the nose it was, I won't say overwhelming, but definitely a, um, a decent amount of raspberry coming through in the nose. I don't get it on the palate. Is it a good wine for $12 retail? I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's, 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 it's good, it's drinkable for sure, especially if you're gonna have a Halloween party. I mean, you're not going to be popping Don Melchor bottles, okay? Unless you just roll that deep. Um, this is going to be, you know, a good a good uh, wine for just your ordinary party wine. You can have a Halloween party or any kind of any kind of party because you need to buy like a few bottles. You're going to have a bunch of people over, um, and you, you can't really you're not going to like blow your budget, right? So twelve bucks, it's going to be good and. Wine, wine is definitely a secondary or tertiary thing for the event. It's just to kind of lubricate things and make have, you know let everybody have a good time, right?
and that's exactly what wines like this are for. This, these, these are everyday drinking wines. This is these are wines for uh, to drink with friends, but not be like we're gonna not say hey everybody come on over we're gonna drink wine. You're gonna want that type of wine. You want a little more serious wine. This is not really that serious. This is just easy drinking, even for a cap. It's actually fairly easy drinking. Um, you know, I went to a wedding this last this last weekend, and um, you know they had they had uh, sparkling wines there, and they had uh, I think they had a Pinot Noir and a Chardonnay. I drank the sparkling wine, and you know <clears throat> weddings are notorious for. They're, you're not going to again. You're not going to roll out the Dom Perignons. You're not going to roll out the Veuve Clicquot. You're not going to be rolling, you know, Joseph Druin, uh, Domaine Druin, you know, freaking Burgundy, you know, Grand Cru, you know, uh, Pinot Noirs and 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 that type of and that type of stuff. You're just not going to. You just need something that people will enjoy. Okay, and that's what I mean. I drank I drank uh, some nice, you know, nice pleasant sparkling wine. It was it was cool. It was great. And I want to thank thank Jessica for inviting me because it was it was a great wedding. Anyway, um, yeah, as far as this wine, it's definitely drinkable for twelve dollars. All righty, let's swap a Rooney here. All right, so this page two, as Paul Harvey would say. Um, hopefully, you know who Paul Harvey is. Uh, so this is the second wine. Uh, this is the 2017 Casiel del Diablo Red Blend, uh, also from the Central Valley in Chile. Now this wine, excuse me, uh, is a combination of 70% Syrah and 30% Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, it's, it just says it's aged in oak barrels. It doesn't say what kind. Uh, just like the other one, didn't say how much was new and used. My feeling is not much new. In this case, I mean, we're not going to be, we're not, we're not trying to replicate $100 bottles of wine here. Again, also $12, uh, suggested retail price. All right. Uh-oh. I knew it. I knew it. But let's just, let's just, let's just end it right now. go all right as as we coming home today from work i was like man you know i i better have enough gas for these two bottles i was like because it seems like every time i do it seems like when i do reviews that's when i run out of gas i always hate when you run out of gas anyway um just enough for that all right so let's check it out it's a 12 dollars right A little bit darker on the fruit on the nose, not as much raspberry. If it is raspberry, it's like a darker raspberry, like a black raspberry. But I would say it's probably more blackberry. And even a touch of like blueberry. It's got the same bramble thing going on, dried leaves. I don't really get that roasted coffee like the cab. Dry earth. It's not as aromatic as the other one. I have to say on the palate, <clears throat> this one seems juicier. Seems a higher delicious factor. Um, the red and the black fruits are there now, blackberry, um, some blueberry too, um, kind of the raspberry, but probably on the darker side of the raspberry. Um, it's an easier drinking wine. I don't get that bitter, the bitterness from coffee like I did with the cab. Um, I don't really get that much earthiness. Like it's definitely more of a fruit forward wine than whereas the cab, the fruit was a little more muted. And, and the temperature on these wines is pretty good. Um, I pulled them out of the cellar about an hour ago, and so they should be like right at correct serving temperature, uh, if not at normal serving temperature for most people. There's a touch of uh, touch of green, like green tobacco, not bell pepper green. 
Maybe a touch of like, uh, I guess mint. If I was going to choose which one I wanted to drink later tonight, because I'm probably going to drink some wine later tonight while I'm editing this video, um, since I got to get this thing out in like a couple days, <clears throat> like, like in two days, um, tomorrow. Um, anyway, um, this is probably the one I would rather drink. Um, again, $12. Um, this one, I just feel like it's, it's just got a little bit more on the palate to offer. People are probably going to be enjoying it a little bit better, just a little more like the delicious factor to it. It's a touch of sweetness to it. Uh, alcohol is also 13, 13 and a half. I don't really taste the alcohol as much as I did on the cab. So this is totally something that people are probably just gonna, they can, they can pound this one. Not that you could drink a lot of this cab, I guess, but they're going to be more likely to pound this one. Um, are these my favorite wines? No. Um, you know, I mean, over the years, my, my, my tendency to like more expensive wines is, has grown. But, I mean, if I'm at someone's house and this is what they're going to serve me, I'm not going to be like, oh, God, I can't believe you served me this. I mean, that's, a, that's good. That's cool. I'll drink it. Um, it, does, it serves a purpose. Twelve dollars. Like I say, you're not going to break the bank. If you want to drink something while you're editing video, either one is just fine. Wow, not bad on time. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode of Monster Chiller Thriller Wine. Um, as always, thank you all for stopping by. Click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below uh, on the website to find out more about this, about these, both of these wines. Um, you can hit the uh, donate button over there. There's a PayPal button. So it's kind of like this way, and actually it's that way. No, it's that way and a little bit down. Um, you can throw me some ducats. Remember that heart surgery? Um, anyway. I do appreciate you all stopping by, um, and we'll see everyone again next time. <laughs> oh! <laughs>